So welcome to DSS vlog number four. Today we're going to have a chat about the relationship between the GA and the AFL. Obviously, big news during the week was Tyrone's Carl McShane going for a trial. Uh, so he's not signed, but going for a trial with Adelaide in Australia in the AFL. Uh, but also it brought it to the fore by Mickey Hart's interview after one of the Dr. McKenna Cup games, uh, those brilliant pre-season competitions that we all love so much. And just some of the thoughts of Mickey Hart on that were uh, brought stuff into the media and into the public and there's a lot of debate on Twitter and uh, and everywhere else. So I think it was worth having a, a quick chat about that. Um, so remember to go over to the website www.dailysportscience.com. At the moment we're running a couple of different offers there. So it's uh, if you sign up for six months, you get a month free. If you sign up for 12 months, you get two, two, two months free. Um, some great content after coming up in the new year. So I've just this morning uploaded information about pre-season training plans, periodized plans and session plans. So there's loads of great information there for people who are looking to get the best out of their team in preparation for the new season, the club season. Um, also, there's a few new blogs up there as well, um, and two new a uh, new initiative that I spoke about previously before Christmas was about uh, you can go on, log on there, and you can purchase actually videos of two of the workshops we did recently with Dublin GA. They're an hour and a half long. Uh, it's only five euro fifty to, to access the video. There's two of them there. Some great stuff about sports science and coaching, and then the other one is individual player outcomes in a team setting. So just have a look on the website or, or follow on Twitter, and you'll uh, you'll see that. So the big debate during the week uh, was Colin McShane going for a trial. Um, and Mickey Hart was none too pleased about that. And I understand obviously Mickey's point of view that. I remember when I was training the London team <clears throat> and any of the players who weren't actually committing for the following season, you really, really missed them and your whole game plan was based around a couple of players. So I'm sure he's really devastated now about that. Um, however, I do think that managers as well, they need to start thinking more about well, what's best for that individual player and most importantly that individual person and I get a little bit of flack online at times from some commentators with my support of the GPA and things like that but you know there are organizations there that are really tuned in to what's best for the person and for the player and to be happy off the pitch means you're happy on the pitch and even if that means Tyrone losing a player one of their best players so be it you know he's he's following his career um, it does make me laugh sometimes as well when <clears throat> people are always talking about the amateur ethos of the GA, which is fantastic and which we support, but then people are complaining that, well, there should be some sort of compensation for uh, Carl's club or his county, but that's just not how things work, obviously. If you're not signed up to any club, you're not signed up to any uh, county with a contract, so it's just like if i wanted to move abroad to work in a job in my career and somebody saying then in, in public that that person shouldn't do that they should stay at home and also there should be some sort of compensation which really doesn't make sense um so i draw parallels with that really about with, when mickey hart and others are saying you know it's a bad move and he shouldn't do that and there's loads more for him at home that's fine to do that in, in private and have that conversation with him but once you go on to TV and post game interviews and state things like that. I mean, it's the very same as somebody going moving abroad for a great opportunity, work opportunity, and you in public then saying, uh, you know, what, what a poor move that is, and you shouldn't do it, and there's way more from at home. So I was a little bit surprised and a bit disappointed with that. Um, a couple of the other things then, I mean, people are saying, yes, yeah, really difficult for Carl Machine to actually break into the FL. Now, I know that in my day job here with Queen's Park Rangers in London, that the amount of players who come over from Ireland and from abroad and try and make it at the, the Premier League and Champions Championship clubs over here, like very, very few of them make it, um, even though people at home think that you know, these are the best players around and once they're signed up with a club that that means that they've got a career and they'll make big money. It really doesn't work like that. You know, I, I don't I can't remember the percentages, but you're probably talking about zero point something less than one percent of players 
who sign up to clubs uh, actually make it in the Premier League to Championship and I'm sure it's the same in the AFL however I would say for him to take that opportunity to live that lifestyle in Australia warm climate and also to, to train to play to be a professional athlete like that's such a fantastic opportunity and such an experience and if he went over and never in two years actually made a first team debut with, with Adelaide or Brisbane or whoever he ends up with so be it you've got brilliant lifestyle you've got a brilliant life experience <clears throat> I know it takes time for lads like Tommy Walsh and some other lads coming back it takes time to reintegrate back into it but I mean look at Marty Clark uh, the down player came back and came, got to a dragged down to an All-Ireland final didn't have as long a career in the GA as he could have but he had a brilliant career in the AFL um, and I was disappointed to hear lads like him getting a bit of slack during the week about the role that they play which is a very very small role I'm not the biggest fan of the compromise rules myself um, but I do understand the kind of internationalization of GA as well I think the players love having the opportunity to actually represent their country I've spoken to a lot of them and they say like that was one of their biggest achievements in their careers actually uh, representing Ireland against another country so that's great so I don't really think that compromise rules or Irish scouts or Australian scouts they're having masses of an effect on our young Irish players going over I think the cream of the crop will always be brought over to Australia because ultimately we're an amateur sport and AFL is a professional sport where if you make it big you can earn good money you know 200 grand and more um, and for a young Irish guy to me it's a no-brainer like the ERSA report saying 30 hours per week or 32 hours per week lads are going to the gym the lads are going training they're watching their diet they're working they're studying they're fitting in training on friday night at eight o'clock like when you're a professional athlete you can arrive in the morning whatever half eight nine o'clock you're given breakfast you can do your prehabilitation your massage your activation work um, you might do look at your analysis clips you go out and train on the pitch you come back in get your lunch do your recovery do your gym session in the afternoon and you're gone home at three four o'clock in the afternoon and you can enjoy your life and you can recover you don't have to worry about working so anybody who thinks that that's not always going to be a huge carrot from these other sports is crazy it's the same with soccer in ireland players will always move over um, they're a different situation because it's a professional sport so clubs young uh, small clubs in Ireland grassroots do get compensation and it's only right that they do and they help to build facilities and everything but the GA is amateur you're, you don't sign a contract you don't you're not um, linked to a club uh, without taking opportunities of going abroad and everything so it's a bit disappointing to hear an inter-county manager speaking like that I have a lot of respect for Mickey Hart for what he's done in the game obviously I don't particularly respect um, how he tried to use the GA uh, during the abortion referendum and some other stuff um, but anyway I respect him as a man I respect him in the game but I 100% disagree with him here obviously he's going to be disappointed but you've got to think about the person uh, rather than just the player in your team and what's best for them it was interesting to read the article by Ray Conlon who is a young young enough uh, Westmead player who went out to Australia um, and took the opportunity and he spoke about how great it was the opportunity and the life experience um, if I have one recommendation read Tommy Martin's article in the Irish Examiner yesterday I spotted it online you'll find him on Twitter um, I'll probably retweet it out after this video goes up it's brilliant it's very very funny but also it really captures the draw of going abroad for young Irish people going back years ago he kind of sets it like a, a an Abbey Theatre play and he's probably right that nearly all, uh, all Abbey Theatre plays play out like that but it's very very funny very witty brilliant writing um, it surprised me how good a writer uh, Tommy is I'm looking forward to some more of his stuff but he just captures it really well and if the adults or the older people in the room say don't go the young Irish fellow will probably say well I'm going anyway to America or Australia or London or wherever it is around the globe um, so that's a fact of life that's what young people do and want to experience new things and it's interesting because it's a it's kind of indicative of a bigger debate in the GA where you have the a lot of the more traditional old-school approach to GA and see 
that the GA must be the centre of everything in the local community and their traditions and everything like that versus a lot of young players, a lot of young analysts out there, coaches, GPA members, people like that who are seeing, well, we can have GA, but can we, have a, we can have a different type of GA as well, where we get to enjoy our lives a little bit more and coach, manage, play, analyze, support GA. Uh, so it's a very interesting debate at the moment, and I'm sure there are more troubles ahead in, in this debate and the fault lines there between probably two ge different generations as well. So that's it for today. Um, make sure to have a look at the website. Have some really big news coming up as well in the next couple of weeks uh, about our workshops. We've got a, a headliner sponsor to come on board um, and also some other companies as well, sports science companies. It should be great. We've four workshops planned throughout the country in 2020. So keep an eye on that. Um, and also we're linking up with some top practitioners, sports scientists and SNC coaches as well who are getting involved with the company. So things are growing and growing and we're hoping 2020 is going to be a really big year. So have a look, go over dailysportscience.com. There's two offers there for six month and 12 month. And also at all stages, obviously the three month option of 15 euro a month and you get loads of information there. So. If you're wanting coaching advice and, and sports science information and everything in preparation for the new season, make sure you go on over, have a look at it and get in contact. Okay, thanks guys. See you next week.